Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to NFTV Extra. We are live on YouTube, my personal Facebook, and on Twitch. <laughs> Hope you are all good. Hope you are all doing very, very good. Obviously, it's the international break at the moment, but what better time to bring you an under-23 update with we've got four games, a new signing, a contract extension, as well as a little bit of an update with NUFC women. Uh, already can see a comment coming in. Martin, good evening, lads. Another win for England, Lewis and Fraser. Fraser amongst the goals, yeah, Ryan Fraser. And you can help smash that like button. That would be absolutely fantastic if you are watching. And Germany have lost to North Macedonia as well. But um, this is the under-23 update. So we'll obviously come to the new signer very shortly because that is, that is on the thumbnail. But uh, we're going to rattle through first four of the Newcastle games that have happened lately. Next time the under-23s play, I think it's in a week and a half's time. Um, but they actually played the Mackhams not so long ago, and it was a 1-1 draw away. All of Newcastle's four games were actually away from home. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. Uh, you can see the, the lineup over on the left-hand side. What you'll notice with all four of these games is we've got a little bit, from what I've gathered, yeah, a little bit of a fullback problem. Because Bradley Cross played left-back, and he's not naturally a left-back, and obviously Brookwell, who was signed from Liverpool in the summer, uh, can fill in at the back, but he's predominantly a defensive midfielder. But there's your lineup, Dan Langley in goal, more on him very shortly. But over on the right hand side, you can see I've got some notes where Matty Longstaff played the full 90 of this game. Interesting though, he still hasn't been involved with the first team. Definitely some beginning on there, like 100 percent there is. But fantastic to see Adam Wilson scoring after his long-term absence. Of course, he did play before this game. But that, that was his first start since September. And you think about it with the end of March now. Um, and obviously, we did equalise scoring two minutes after we conceded. Uh, and just for the giggles, I've put Robin Cock. Yeah, I did say that right. Robin Cock did start for Leeds. Um, so he'll be back in the Leeds lineup very, very shortly if he isn't already. But that was the Sullen one. And it's a shame because, like, obviously, and I'm not going to. Dig Sullen out on this video, although they are the rivals. It's a shame we haven't had a first team Northeast Derby because they obviously two division. Well, it could be in the same division next year, the way we're going. But you know what I'm getting at? It's we, the only thing that we've got is the under 23s. Although our under 21s did play their first team a couple of years ago, which means Johnny went down to. But that was the first game. Um, and you'll see as we go along with this, um, I've got more and more notes because the under 23s haven't been great this season. But the next one was Leeds away. Um, again, over on the left-hand side, you've got your lineups there. Dan Langley, you had Ryan Barrett, Ludwig Franzler, Owen Eisen, sorry, McAtee, Braddy Cross, Jack Young, who's the captain in the minute, Henri Savé, remember him? He started, played the full 90. Elliot Anderson, and then we've got Adam Wilson, Chris Natsu, and Tom Allen. And then over on the right-hand side, McEntee, who was the spit double of Matt. You hate me mention that. Matt on our channel. Give away a penalty for the first goal and for Leeds a second. Nobody was picking up Creswell from a corner. And you can see all the goals up on the club's website, by the way. Wilson playing more and more. Got over an hour in the tank once again. Savi, strangely playing the full 90. Obviously, he'll be a free agent in the summer. I mean, he's, that signing's been an absolute disaster. Atsu scored, actually. Um, after Alan had pulled the ball back just after half time, just before half time, I beg your pardon. But remember, remember, Chris and Atsu is registered, he can play for the first team. So, whether he's just got to gain momentum to get match fitness, you tell me in the comments. I'll be reading some of your comments out a little bit later, so do uh, please keep them coming. And then we won a game, yes, we won a fucking game. The under 23s won one. Uh, this was a way again down to Norwich, a long trip. If you ever drove to Norwich and back, it's it's a toughie. Jake Turner was back in the sticks for this one. Again, Barrett Brookwell was playing at centre back cross. Uh, Josh Scott, Henri Savé, again playing. He played 86. Jack Young, Tom Allen, Florent, and Delcio. Lucas De Baller came on for him. Stan Flatty back. And Tory. Remember him? He's been injured for a while with Wilson coming off the bench to replace him. But as I say, on the notes over on the right hand side, Tory back in the side after being injured since December. So he's been injured for three and a half months. He's playing over an hour. So that's great for him because he's first choice striker for the under-23s. So it's good to see him back. 
Turner was busy in goal, making several of saves. Brookwell cleared one off the line, but astonishing, astonishingly easy for me to say that was Newcastle's first clean sheet all season. That's a, that's that's a shocking statistic. That like again, as I've highlighted, Henri Savé playing two almost two full games, but the big one is Owen Bailey. He's been out for, for what eighteen month injured. He came back. Had a setback. There's a great article on the club's website about Owen Bailey because obviously he's pictured on your screen there and he's the captain of the under-23s. But he came off and scored with his first touch off the bench, long-term injury for his first appearances. And there is some rumours going around that he may, he might be let go. Uh, the rumours going around saying about Owen Bailey that he's already knows that his future's not the club. I hope that's not the case because that has been leaked out. But um, great for Owen Bailey. Absolutely fantastic. And playing centre mid, well, sitting in front of the back four, and of course playing centre back in his local lad from North Shields as well. But it was it was just good to see that under twenty threes win a game, mind you. Did did they deserve to win? Probably not, but a win is a win. And then the last game I'm going to cover, which is the most recent one, and this was again away from home. It's a two two draw down at Fulham. Will Brown this time was back on goal. And then it was Barrett right back, Brookwell, Cross, Scott, Carolyn. And then he had Young, Wilson, Flatterty, Atsu again starting. He played just under an hour and Tom Allen. And then over on the right-hand side, again, I mentioned and Chris Natsu. He's played uh, two out of the last three games. Uh, and it's the first time also Adam Wilson has played the full 90 over the last six months. Owen Bailey managed to get 45 minutes in the tank, which is good for him. A new signing, Jay Turner-Cook, was named on the bench. We've touched upon him in a couple of videos a couple of months ago on this channel. Uh, he's the one that we've got from Sunderland. So obviously, his dad was let go by Sunderland after some McDaff like 30 odd year service. But once again, Newcastle call, pulled a goal back straight away through Allen, but we fell behind just before half time. However, Allen got his brace, excuse me, into the second half. And Lacarche was given a straight red late on in the game for actually slapping Stan Flatty. So those are the those are the results. Let's have a look at what you're saying uh, in the comments as well. Hello, Peter. Yes, Peter, I'm good actually. Really, really good. Thank you very much for asking. I hope you are well as well. Senshi's in the comments as well. Uh, Harry was a captain in France. He never caught up to our pace of the game, as in Henri Savé. And Thomas has said uh, our under twenty threes in the pill emoji this season. And, and to be honest, Thomas, it's not just this season. It's probably for the last two three years now. Even Peter says Martin. And even Thomas as well. So those were the four games. Let's have a look at the league table company where the under 23s are sitting in the minute. And it's not great reading, is it? Uh, there is 24 games in this league. Uh, we're coming towards the end of the season now. Leeds are literally going to go up as champions. So we know that. So Leeds are going to be fantastic achievement for Leeds because it's their first season in this division. So they're going to be promoted to Division 1, which is the top tier. And then from second down to fifth, that's the playoffs. But like the championship playoffs, League One, League Two, where you play each other twice and then you go into the final um, and then whoever wins the final gets promoted. That's how that's how it is with the playoffs. Unless they've changed it, made it one leg in the semis. But Newcastle really haven't got any chance. We're on 21. We're seven points behind Wolves. We've only got five games left. That's not happening. That's too much of a gap to pull back and you're asking all the other teams and you look at obviously the northeast Newcastle's under 23s are the worst at the minute because Millsborough higher even Sunderland who finished rock bottom last season uh are doing all right they picked up a couple of wins of late actually Sunderland but not great West Brom back now obviously Newcastle have pulled away a little bit four points away from West Brom but it's it's not it's not really good rating at the league table at the minute with the under 23s uh, I had a bit of a rough day with uh, Bloody Pain. You two are just having a conversation. These two are the members over on the main channel. These two are just having a conversation amongst themselves. Aye, that, that's what that, that's what you want, lads. You know, keep going. Keep chatting amongst yourselves. So that was all the under-23s matches. Uh, and, of course, a couple of um, deals to, to talk about is this lad. Uh, I've talked about him in the past. Uh, I, I said this uh, actually at the start of the season, that Dan Langley should have been... Uh, well, I say should have, he has been. Uh, he's huge, man. He's like six foot seven. He's massive, Dan Langley. 
said um, I wasn't a big fan of Jake Turner and Turner went out on loan to Morecambe and played quite a few games up until early December and he was recalled and as you've seen with the lineups the last four games has been rotated between Langley, Turner and Will Brown but Langley's just signed a two-year contract extension, local lad once again, fantastic piece of news. I said at the start of the season I wanted him to be the under-23s because it was right for Jake Turner to get out and play football. And he's played a few games, not as many as I would like. I would have seen a lot of play more. Um, but credit the lad signing new contract extension. Well, it's only two year though, which I thought, which I thought was a little bit strange, mind you. Just two years. I thought they might whack him on a, a five year deal. But again, the development you run that risk, don't you? If you don't develop, it might cost the club, especially with obviously the pandemic situation at the minute. Uh, we also got an. Um, NUFC women's update coming up in the next couple of minutes or so. But uh, a new sign-in through the door. You, you have probably seen this or, over on the social media. This is Matty Bonds. Well, fantastic surname. That, I mean, that's just that's just uh, paper as the rags dream. Bonds. Well, so yeah, you can say that. I think Newcastle was the club which made the most sense in terms of where I am at the moment. They offered me the best opportunity. For me to be where I want to be in the future, and again, I'll just highlight it. Look, it's a great, it's great that we've got a uh, lad who has came from. Obviously, he's English, but he's was over at Leipzig. Uh, he's a left back, young lad, eighteen, nineteen. He's going to probably interchange between under eighteen to under twenty threes. But as I say already, we've got a problem at left left back, and I think we've got a, well, Barrow can play at right back, but I think I think that position is where the under twenty three is a little bit. Uh, week at the minute and he can come in and perhaps make that his own if he does develop in the next 12 months but great to see him come in and it, it might you might question yourselves well we've signed Jay Turner Cook and we've signed Bonds well who aren't weren't part of our original academy but it's the way that the under 23s operate now when there's not many of the lads coming through they take away the long staff so we haven't had anybody for years that has become a regular. You might say Carol, but I'm, when Carol broke through, that was years back. Dummett was years back. Gillespie didn't even make the grade. So hopefully we'll get a few more Jodies coming through, but the whole thing needs ripped apart from top to bottom for me, the, the under-23s, because there's not enough money going into it. None at all whatsoever. Um, what's this one? So Lee, have you picked a team for the championship next season, Ginger? Yeah, I'm not optimistic. Obviously, we'll talk more about... The uh, the first team or on the next couple of days on the main channel, we do have the influencer tomorrow of Alex Hurst. That'll be good watch for you. Obviously, he's part of Nust True Faith. Um, not afraid to say nothing. So if you want to get your questions in for me and Carl tomorrow, um, Thomas has mentioned there Dan Langley. What a giant he is! He's absolutely huge as well. Um, so yes, that's coming up tomorrow. And of course, we've got a black and white show as well. Uh, all your WhatsApps and everything coming back in. And um, we've got We Are Tottenham lads, We Are Tottenham TV lads uh, getting involved in that as well. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, if you've got any questions as well, uh, please fire them in about the under-23s or the women's. Um, the women's are back. The, women, the women's are back. The women's football are back. Anyway, I've seen women have been there two or three times a season before, before lockdown stopped all of that. So if you live around the area, Drew Park, it's literally next door to the Metro. You can get on the Metro. Um, they, their season has been disrupted. Their league has made, has made, well, it's void, basically. But they do have the County Cup to play. And they've also got the FA Cup. And they've been back in training this week, which is good to see. Uh, you can see Colin Locke's um, Twitter. Uh, he's been, he posts everything about the women's games. Um, but yeah, great. Because they've had their season disrupted, dismantled, ripped apart. The lasses have been doing now. Obviously, we had Becky Langley on the NFC, NUFC quiz the other day. And she was on the Greenwood and Mulliner show a couple of weeks back as well. And I've got a little clip because she talks about the FA Cup. Because this is a dream for the girls. Because if they get past Brighouse, which is away this Sunday, they're then into the third round. And he can pull a big boy out. Well, a big girl. Big boy, big girl. What am I trying to say here? I think it's now when I'm on a boot. But if they pull a big gun out, they could get a Manchester City or an Arsenal, or a Chelsea, who are huge in the women's game. Could you imagine that, man? That'd be absolutely fantastic, and then get a big name. But this is a little clip from our captain, Brooke Cochran. You can achieve anything that you want to achieve. There's The only person that stops you is you. And I think with the mindset that our players have, and our team has, our coaching staff, um, although the league is null and void, that doesn't 
change our expectations. That doesn't change where we want to be. We've still got two massive cup runs. We've still got a county cup that we can win. We've still got an FA Cup that we can go and fly in. Do you know what I mean? Like the FA Cup is it's a dream. Anything can happen in the FA Cup and no one can tell you that it's not gonna happen. Like when we step on that pitch to play against Brick, we're, we're going there to beat them. That's the expectation, just like if we were playing in the league. Um, so although the league, if winning the league and getting promotion is pushed back, it's still an expectation and it's still a target that we're going to get. Maybe it didn't happen this season, but it'll happen next season and we'll keep pushing for that. Good luck. Good luck to the lasses. Uh, we'll keep you updated on the socials if you're not following them directly. Of course, we'll have an update uh, as ever, I'll bring you that because uh, I'm the guy who does this on uh, our channel as well. Pete has come up for a question, Lee. Are there any players in the under-23 side good enough for the first team? Well, that was my last point because Ellie Anderson has switched alliances. Pete, I don't know if you've seen this, but he has represented Scotland, but he's just actually switched to the England under-19s and he's represented them now. So he's obviously the first choice. So congratulations to Ellie Anderson. Uh, up lives by the coast, brought up from the coast. I was actually there the day, it was lovely the day, and yeah, fantastic to see Ellie Anson in an England shirt, which is good, brilliant for him. Um, uh, he's probably one Stan Flatterty, I've talked about quite a bit. I think Yannick Tory needs a loan spell out for me. He's big, powerful, pacey. I think he needs to get out alone. loan, I think, for next season. Um, also, I think Dang Langley could do with a loan spell out the defenders, not so much. I don't think there's anyone for me who's breaking, but. Adam Wilson is very tricky. He's just come back from injury. He could have a loan spell out. I think what you might find over the summer is that you'll probably find a lot of them um, that might be let go. Um, Joe White was another one. I forgot to mention him. He's a Carlisle lad. And he came from the under-18s. And he's now mixing between the two sides. He's a, fa a fabulous talent. Bobby Clark, if you go a little bit under, to under-16s. He's obviously Lee Clark's. Lee Clarkson, he's a talent as well. There's actually a couple of videos floating about on YouTube about his um, skills. So, I mean, there's there's a there's a two or three, but then you will have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, there's a couple of late developers that will spring up as well. Say so Sunderland have brought in a new head of recruitment, yeah, because because all of Middlesbrough have got the best academy in the northeast. Period. They have. I hate to say that, but they have. We've got the worst, I think, because at least Sunderland can bring through players. I know it's easier said than done in League One, but they did it even when they win the Championship in the Premier League as well. They had more players breaking through than what we did as well. COVID symptoms. Oh, Martin, I hope you're all right, mate. Um, you've still got the sweats. <laughs> we'll get rid of them. Uh, and they were gone. Joe White. Yeah, I would totally agree. Laughing Gravy as well. And Elliot Anderson as well. But that is your wrap-up. That's the latest from the under-23s. I'll bring you that update once again in about a month's time. Um, and obviously the big game for this Sunday for the women's side as well. We've got one last question. What do you think about the way Leeds utilise in the 23s? Providing match, fit, match fitness to recovering players for minutes. Do you think more teams should do this? That's a brilliant question, Chris. And they're flying, by the way, Chris. You, you've probably seen the league table a little bit earlier on. Um, they are absolutely winning that league, our league by, and this is the first time they've come in. That's probably, I bet you, I bet you Bielsa's got a, a major impact on going down the levels as well. A bit like when Rafa was here. Rafa wanted to try and push it, but obviously the powers that be don't allow that. But Providing match fitness too for recovering players for minutes. I think that's great. And obviously you've seen a couple of the under-23s get first-team minutes this season under Bielsa. He's not afraid to. And they're the flying the league, so credit them. Credit to them. Don't worry. Uh, any talent he brings, the coaches will kick out them teams in two years. Ginger just said, Leeds because Sunderland have a £25 million training ground. We have wheelie bins and paddling pools. Shouldn't be neutering young players rather than get rid of them. Yeah, Peter. Well, look at look at Ivan Tony who, we, who we got in from Northampton. Uh, look at Adam Armstrong at the minute, the blast and the goals in the championship. Right, I am going to say goodbye now. Uh, stay tuned to NFTV Extra. We've still got plenty of videos on this channel. Tomorrow over on the main one, as I say, we've got the influencer with me, Carl, and Alex Hurst, who's well known amongst the fan base. And then we've got a black and white show because uh, we haven't done one for a while. That is on Friday night. And Saturday, I think we might have a green with a Mullen show. I, I think so. And, of course, uh, we'll bring Spurs on <laughs> on Sunday. Right. Enjoy your night, everyone. Ta-da. Bye-bye.